Hi everyone. Welcome to the talk. I'm Atish. Currently, I'm working at Revos. I used to work at Western Digital before that, and all the discussions that will happen today during this session, all the work that I have done while I was being at Western Digital. Now, in today's session, we'll discuss about performance monitoring in Sky using Perf. Before diving into the details, let's take a short look at the uh, agenda. Now, first, we'll discuss with a very brief introduction to Perf. Then we'll discuss the RISC-V specifications and the current status of the specifications and what are the improvement happened over time to enable Perf to have Perf a feature complete with all other ISAs. Now then we'll move to the implementation details of those specifications and we'll conclude with a demo of uh, Perf running on QMU and hi five unmatched. So what exactly is Perf? Now Perf is the official Linux profiler that uh, you must have, most of you must have, uh, may have uh, encountered on your, in your professional career while analy analyzing your workloads. Now, while analyzing workload, Perf gives you an insight where exactly your workload is spending time and what exactly it is doing, how much percentage of uh, the workloads runtime is spending where. Now, without going into uh, a lot of details of Perf, which you can find uh, in internet, let's just take a look at the overview architecture and then we'll uh, deep dive into the RISC-V specific parts, which this talk is about. Now, when you execute Perf on in user space, it actually opens a system call and that system call is the way to get into the Linux. And the Linux has different kinds of Perf event data structure attached. Now that Perf event data structure can be a trace point, can be software or can be hardware. For the trace point, uh, some of the examples where it is used is K probes or U probes. And then uh, obviously your F trace. And then for software, there's a context switch, page faults, and then obviously for virtualization, KVM also uses software uh, Perf event. But for the hardware, uh, for the hardware, the micro architectural events such as CPU cycle, CPU instruction counters, uh, cache messages, your branch prediction data, all those are considered as a hardware events. And this talk will focus on the hardware event part. Now, whenever we uh, first collect some data, it writes to a ring buffer, that's an MMAP ring buffer, and that's how the user space gets access to that those data. Now let's take a look at what's the current status of Perf in upstream Linux for Risk Five. Now for Risk Five, oh sorry, for Risk Five, uh, the Perf support has been there since almost uh, 2018. Now, if it is there, what I'm going to talk about? It was there, true, but the limited uh, the support was very limited because it can only monitor cycle and instruction count, which are always running. Now it cannot start or stop those counters. At the same time, uh, RISC-V ISA specification defines uh, 29 programmable counters, which also it cannot use. And it cannot, if the, the running counter, even if it overflows, it cannot handle those overflow because there is no provision for overflow interrupt support. Because it cannot support overflow interrupt, it cannot support perf event sampling. So all of these uh, limitations, some of them were part of uh, the specification issues or specification gaps that was uh, not uh, present before. So that's why the support was not uh, on a support was not up to date for Perf. So let's take a look at the current specification and then we'll discuss what are the improvements that happened over time. So the current risk wise specification says that we have three fixed counters and 29 programmable counters. Although all of them known as uh, starts with M, like M cycle, M instruction rate, and then MHPM counter three to 31 are readable and writable from M mode only. Supervisor mode can read uh, these values with a shadow copy of an another, with a another CSR, which is known as HPM counter X, X stands for three to 31, where uh, it maintains a shadow copy of the, the M counters like the counters that are accessible from M mode. 
Now, apart from the counters, there are event selector CSRs, which corresponds to each counter that is there. So for MHPM counter three, there is MHPM count event three to 31. So all these events also uh, CSR are also readable and writable from M mode only. Apart from that, uh, the risk five specification uh, defines uh, a way to uh, control the accessibility and the execution of the counters. So there are two CSRs. One is M counter enable, which controls the accessibility of the CSR, and there is M count inhibit, which controls the execution of the uh, counters. So M counter enable uh, controls the if these bits are set, which basically every bit represents a particular counter, then the lower privilege mode can access these counters or can read these counters. For M counter N, that would be the supervisor mode can access this counter if these bits are set. Similarly, for M count inhibit, it does the opposite. If this bit is set, the counter is not running. And if this bit is clear, the counter is running. So in order to run the counter, you need to clear these bits. Now, what exactly is missing in this five prib spec that prevented to have a full perf support? First of all, uh, perf is running in a user space and it, as I explained, the kernel take the, does the heavy load of configuring all the performance counters with a specific events that perf user, the user requested. So supervisor mode need to access those uh, MHPM event and counters. It needs to be able to start and stop those counters. And then it can need to enable and disable the accesses directly from supervisor mode. And the privilege spec does not allow any of these. To address these issues, there is an SBI PMU extension was proposed uh, this year. And a why SBI, why not an ISA extension, a valid point that Probably there will be an ISA extension in future as well, but the ISA extension has to take care of uh, or define all the CSR and also has to take care of the virtualization, which is uh, a bigger task and will probably take longer time. And by the time all the hardware that's available, the existing hardware, we cannot uh, do any pub support if we only rely on the ISA extension. So anything that is not in the performance critical part, that means anything that is any feature of perf that does not require uh, to rely on the ISA extension that actually uh, need to monitor while the perf monitoring happen, that's uh, we can rely on an SBI call, which can help to discover and configure the counters. And it uh, gives a way to provide perf support on existing platforms as well. But everything cannot be uh, an SBA extension because we need some uh, runtime support or dynamics support of perf while the counters are running, it may overflow. We cannot rely on e-call, which would be an additional overhead. While uh, for reading, we cannot uh, rely on the e-call. So to uh, address the overflow part, the counter overflow part and counter event, sorry, counter uh, event filtering part, uh, there is an ISA extension was proposed, which is known as SCOF PMF ISA extension. So let's uh, take a look at individual extensions and understand uh, what exactly these extensions define. So first I say improvements. So the SCOF PMF extension stands for a supervisor level extension and the COP PMF stands for counter overflow and privilege mode filtering. Now this specification is already frozen and very close to the ratification. Probably by the time you are watching this video during this five summit, it's probably uh, ratified as well. It's available at this. Uh, you can go and uh, read the details uh, with this link or uh, probably if it is ratified, if you download the latest privilege spec, it will include the uh, SCOP PMF extension. Now it only adds one generic CSR and 29 uh, additional RV32 specific CSRs to have the MHPM event uh, for the to define the upper 32 bit of MHPM event. Now the upper third upper 32 bits are required because SCOP PMF defines the upper eight bits for overflow and filtering. So let's take a look at how overflow is handled. Now the from the upper eight bits of the MHPM event, the most significant bit that's 63 
is defined as an overflow bit, which is basically set when the counter overflows. So it also acts as an interrupt disable and enable bit. That means the interrupt cannot be triggered, further interrupt cannot be triggered until that bit is set and the software need to clear that bit so that the hardware can generate the further interrupts. And this is not an issue because the counter will overflow and keep on uh, continuing. So you can always compute the delta. Now we solve the first part of the problem, which is how the counter will overflow and uh, how we'll notify the supervisor and how the interrupt will generate. But we need an interrupt number, a local interrupt number to define, uh, to handle the interrupts, right? That's why the bit 13 is reserved for now the, in the latest specification, the bit 13 is reserved for counter overflow interrupts and uh, the ESCO PMF, if the hardware doesn't support this bit, it should uh, hardware the zero hardware, the bit to zero in all the pending uh, interrupt pending and interrupt enabled CSRs. Now we solved a uh, counter or how the counter will overflow and how the interrupt will generate. But once the interrupt will generate and we are in the interrupt handler, the supervisor mode needs to know or Linux needs to know which of the counter are overflow. That's why there's a S count OVF, which is a generic CSR that was introduced, which contains the OF bit of all of the MFPM event CSRs. And that's how you'll know that which bits are set or that will indicate that those events are actually overflow. Now, uh, remember that we only defined or this specification defined MHPM event 3 to 31. That means there is no MHPM event defined for the fixed counters is that cycle instruction counter. Now that's why the, uh, the overflow cannot be supported directly for cycle and instruction because there won't be any OF bit for that. But if the hardware allows, and in fact, in QME, we have experimented that and it seems to work. Uh, the, if the hardware allows to monitor the cycle and instruction count via the other programmable counters, we can repurpose the programmable counters for the cycle and instruction and that can happen dynamically. So it doesn't have to be always only if you are monitoring cycle and instruction counters then and you want to do power sampling that time you can reuse it if your hardware supports it. Currently the QMU supports it. The last piece of the SCO PMF extension is basically how the event filtering happens. So the event filtering is basically required when you are running, you want to analyze your workload for a particular privileged mode or uh, something like, let's say you are running in user space and you want to understand your workload statistics only when uh, where your workload is spending time, only when you are in user space. So you want to, uh, you don't want the counter to run if it is the execution is happens in S mode or M mode, that's the supervisor of machine mode. That's why you bit set the M and S bit, which will prevent M inhibit and S inhibit bit, which will prevent the incrementing of counters while the execution is in M or S mode. Similarly, there is U1 VSVU mode to prevent the incrementing of counter in those specific modes. Now that's all for the uh, ICE extension. Now let's take a look at the SBI extension and how it helps to address some of the gaps. Now SBI is an interface between your supervisor mode where your Linux runs and your supervisor execution mode, which is a machine mode or for virtualization environment, it is between VS and HS or HS and M. Now SBI extension gives a very flexible way to discover the counters and configure those hardware counters and upon request, uh, you can start and stop the counters. Apart from facilitating the hardware counters, it also helps. Uh, it also defines a set of firmware performance counters, which uh, gives you an additional uh, insight of your workload and to understand what exactly is happening in firmware, how much time you are spending in firmware while you are running your workload. This is very unique to RISC-5 and um, Obviously, uh, apart from defining the standard perf event, it gives you a complete access. It, it has a provision to give you a complete access for the entire micro architecture uh, events, all the hardware events through raw events. Now the specification is already frozen and um, it's part of the SBA v0.3. Now it defines a uh, different kind of events such as hardware events and cache events, which are one-to-one -one mapping 
with Puff Linux. And then there are hardware raw events, which that is not anything that's not defined as a standard Linux Puff event can be defined as a hardware raw events. For the firmware events, it uh, defines the the specific firmware calls where e call happen. Like for all the SBI calls such as IPI timer, fans, and then there are. Uh, Apart from the SBI calls, there are misaligned load store that usually SBI implementation handle in risk five. So you can get a statistics for all the trap events as well. Now let's take a look at the functions that are available with the PMU extension. So first is obviously the num counter, which will provide you the what are the how many counters that are available in the hardware and in firmware. Now once you get that, you need to know which are the firmware counters and the hardware counters. And if it is a hardware counter, what's the CSR that's associated associated with that counter, and what's the width of that counter? Remember, uh, for the supervisor, everything is a logical counter ID. So the mapping happens at the SBA implementation level at machine mode, which is more secure as well. Next, once you figure out what are the counters available, uh, I, then you can give an counter base and mask, which will allow you to uh, for a particular event, which will let the machine mode configure those events for um, that specific counter so that you know that this event is now associated with this counter and then while analyzing uh, while running perf it will read that counter for that event whistle to start and stop we need uh, start and stop calls and you can start and stop multiple counters together with base and mask there are flags defined to have a uh, or cases where you let's say for example you don't want to reset while you are uh, stopping a counter like reset the mapping between event and counter or you don't want to set the initial value while you are starting so that's where this comes in handy then there is firmware read so firmware read calls uh, allows you to read the firmware counters at runtime because uh, the hardware counters you can read with the hpm counter csr because those are accessible to ca supervisor mode or in linux but uh, for Linux to read the firmware counters, there has to be an explicit call because it's the data that's stored in the firmware. Now let's take a look at the implementation status. Implementation status. So for Linux kernel implementation, the uh, legacy implementation that was present in uh, Arc RISC-V, uh, that has been moved to completely uh, replaced by a new platform specific platform driver that depends on DT on the in the driver's perf directory. The original driver was not very scalable and does not allow uh, to extend the perf driver to support, let's say you have an interconnect tomorrow, which has different PMU or have a uh, SOC specific uh, PMU that's not part of the, uh, the core. So all those can be easily extended now. Now the current implementation supports the interrupt discovery through DT. Uh, as this is a work in progress, the patches are being reviewed. These things may change in future. Now, the one uh, a good thing about this implementation is that the core implementation, the core perf functionality are abstracted away in a library. And then on top of that, there is an SBI specific driver, which allows you to, uh, this method allows you to implement different uh, PMU drivers in future. Let's say tomorrow there is an ISA extension for newer hardwares to support some of the features that are defined by SBA that can be easily implemented as an extra additional driver. Similarly, for to retain the compatibility uh, to maintain the backward compatibility of with older firmware which doesn't does not have the SBA PMU extension, we are also preserving the legacy implementations with a legacy driver. Now all the patches are already in the mailing list, and the core perf support has been. Uh, been there for a while it's at v4 or v5 now v4 now and recently uh thanks to mario he added the support for high five unmatched so you can do full perf support on high five unmatched as well and this is the one of the advantage that i talked about with the sbi extension that allows you to run perf on existing hardware as well which is high five unmatched which didn't have scop support or even n count in event now for open sbi implementation so OpenSBA is an um, the standard of RISC-V uh, form standard RISC-V SBA implementation, which provides you the firmware. Now it already supports the SBA PMU extension and SCOF PMF extension, PMF extension. All the platform needs to do, and it defines already a standard is DT bindings 
to define the mapping between the event and counters, the event selector value and the standard Linux events, like perf events, and the raw events and the what counters that can be mapped to the raw events. And all of them are one to many relations. So you can easily define them uh, in a very succinct DT format. So all the plat all that platform needs to do to define those DT for their specific hardware. And if you look at the patches for HiFi one match, that exactly what happens uh, for HiFi one match. So you just define these DT bindings and the generic format that's generated by OpenSPI will be able to map everything. And uh, generic firmware allows you to boot, uh, generic firmware can boot on all the platforms. So that's a very good advantage to test that the generic code uh, with a simple DT binding. But if platform for some reason uh, do not want to rely on the DT bindings or have a different way of mapping things, there are already also platform hooks available in the OpenSBI where uh, platform specific code can be implemented and invoke those platform hooks to enable platform specific uh, mappings. Apart from that, the OpenSBA also supports all the firmware counters defined by SBA PM extension and all the firmware counters defined as an raw event from the user space, like while running path. Now, the last part uh, in this uh, implementation stack is QMU. So, since we did not have, uh, do not have a lot of hardware with any hardware, in fact, any hardware with SCOP PM extension, we need to enable QMU to do the testing and verification. So now QMU has full perf support, full HPM counter support, where you can configure the number of counters. Now SCOF PMF can be added as a CPU feature. Now you can also read and write all the MHPM counters and start and stop the M count in a bit. It also added different uh, perf event uh, that's QMU specific, like DTLB and ITLB load misses. And it also support um, interrupt overflow filtering now. Now the patches are already available in the mailing list. You can take a look and uh, if you have any questions, you can post a uh, reply to the mailing list. Now for the future work, uh, obviously the first job is to upstream the entire Linux kernel and QMU support. Then we can, uh, the uh, immediate goal after that is to support PMU in KVM so that virtualized guests can uh, take advantage of perf. Then there is a uh, firmware counters that can be exposed as a generic uh, perf event of like perf co framework. We need to explore that. Obviously, once the hardware is available with SCOP PMF, we need to verify it on hardware. And as I discussed, there are an overflow, dedicated overflow bits for cycle and instruction count. So that's also we need to provision in the future version of IS extension so that the precious uh, programmable counters are not used for perf sampling for cycle and instruction and that's all i have uh, in terms of content so let's uh, i'm running out of time so i don't have time to do a live demo so let's take a look at the let's uh, quickly few screenshots that i collected uh, while running perform KMU. so you can see that uh, here perf start is running with uh, various counters so first two are basically former counters then the cache miss is something that's not mapped in DT. That's why it says not counted. DTLB and ITLB are the new counters that are introduced in KMU and then cycle and instruction. And you can use popstart for all the events that are uh, any event that can be mapped in uh, device. Two. Now the next is basically perf record. So perf record basically uh, allows you to do event sampling. So in this case, we are sample, let's say, instruction count, cycle count, and all the DTLB, ITLB load misses for every 10,000 event. Once it runs, you can use how you would have used it in uh, x86 or ARM. You'd see the similar statistics where it is spending time and how many samples it has collected. If you do perf report uh, without dash dash HTDIO, you'll see the individual counts as well. Now the last one is thanks to Mario is in high five and the spot start on high five unmatched. So you can see that the entire it prints the entire uh, all the events that are defined in high five unmatched. So you can do a power start. You can on this one high five unmatched as well. And if you need to rebase the various patches on top of my series, and obviously uh, high five unmatched does not support uh, SCOP PMF, so you cannot do power sampling. So that's all I have from uh, today's talk.
if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, I'll be in q and session, so feel free to ask there, uh, both in chat and video-based. And also, uh, you'll be there, uh, you can reply on the mailing list or review the patches on the mailing list. Thank you for attending today's talk.